Hello, and thank you so much for inviting me to speak with you all today. I'm Assistant Speaker Katherine Clark, and I'd like to begin with a thank you for the incredible work you do to ensure every person in Massachusetts has equal representation and protection under the law. You bring our Constitution to life every single day. And right now, that work is more important than ever. The coronavirus pandemic has brought heartache and hard times to so many, from unemployment to food insecurity to loss of life. It has brought isolation and financial strain, severing many from their routines and support systems. And it has exponentially increased the difficulties and traumas facing low-income Americans. Since 1999, the Equal Justice Coalition has advocated for state funding for legal aid organizations that provide advice and representation to low-income people facing serious legal issues. The Equal Justice Coalition's annual Walk to the Hill puts a spotlight on the need for legal aid, especially as the COVID crisis continues to threaten the health, safety, financial st stability, and well-being of people across the Commonwealth and the country. And as the largest funding source for civil legal aid organizations in our state, the Massachusetts Legal Assistance Corporation has led the fight to ensure that everyone has access to the professional services necessary to protect themselves in a legal case and secure the benefits they rightly deserve. Throughout the pandemic, your invaluable work has protected people against unlawful evictions, helped them maintain their proper benefits, including Medicare, disability, and Social Security, and protected workers during a time of great personal risk. And you have continued to ensure that critical projects like the Greater Boston Immigrant Defense Fund and Domestic Violence Legal Assistance Project have the funding they need to serve their clients and the Commonwealth at large. That's why I'm so proud to be your partner in Congress. In 2020, House Democrats secured almost $450 million for the Legal Services Corporation. And a year later, we were able to increase that funding by an additional $25 million. Today, I can tell you we have secured $600 million for legal services for fiscal year 2022 and a $135 million increase to meet this moment of incredible challenge. As a member of the Appropriations Committee, I am fighting to ensure that this increase is signed into law and gets this funding to your organizations. In addition, to this funding stream, Congress is working to address the many issues Americans are facing that force them to seek legal help in the first place. Last year, we passed the American Rescue Plan, which included more than $21 billion in emergency rental assistance, $10 billion to help homeowners who are behind on their mortgage and utility payments, and $20 million for the Fair Housing Initiatives Program to investigate fair housing complaints, strengthen enforcement, and assist those who believe they've been victims of housing discrimination. The President's Build Back Better Act will make further life-changing investments in families by closing the Medicaid coverage gap, investing $170 billion in affordable housing, the largest investment in affordable housing in history, and extending key tax cuts in the American Rescue Plan that benefit middle-income workers and families, including the child tax credit, and making $100 billion investments in immigration reform. These are the long-term solutions we need to just not rebuild from the pandemic, but create a more equitable, 
just society and prevent another crisis of this scope. Of course, we still have a fight ahead of us in Congress to enact these proposals, but look how far we've come and how many Bay Staters have had their lives transformed by your work. And I'd like to acknowledge the brave clients whose stories of recovery and strength through legal aid are truly inspiring. Thank you for being part of this conference. You're the reason we're here, the reason we do this work, and the heart of our fight for equal justice. So even as we struggle with new challenges, we all remain dedicated to the work, and I remain more energized than ever. Thank you again for your partnership and dedication to equality, serving the vulnerable, and ensuring that our justice system works for everyone.